What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. All right, let's get to the main event here, and uh, we're going to do some rookie re-ranks here coming up, and this guy will certainly be a part of it, but I wanted to talk about him because it seems like he's, yeah, there's a, just keeps building and building every week, and, you know, we we talked about him off the jump in the season, maybe the first podcast we did. Uh, we're going to talk about James Robinson here and what you should do with him, uh, whether you should be selling or holding. Um, I'm not, obviously, if you're selling, somebody's buying. Um, I'm not sure that I'd be in the buying market of Robinson currently. Um, but he's an interesting guy. We're going to do, like I said, do, we're going to do the re-ranks in a week or probably two weeks or so and have a show of rookie re-ranks where they are right now, where we got them, have a good time with it. And a little sneak peek, Antonio Gibson number one over there. What? Not over here, but over there. Oh, oh, no, oh, oh over there. Probably not, but I mean, you're going to have to tune in to figure it out. Yeah. Um, He's, yeah, we'll save it. Um, so James Robinson, just to get you, Did you know, he had less uh, carries and receptions. Yeah. yeah. 33 Sorry. career carries. James Robinson. Uh, my bad. James Let's Robinson. Give this man just to familiarize dude. yourselves with him. He's 5'10, 220, coming out of Illinois State, 22 years old. Um, they, coming into the season, it was going to be a committee after they cut for Fournette. Um, they wanted to use the Zigbo. They wanted to use Armstead. And James Robinson was kind of the guy who was I'm not saying the odd man out of that, but just wasn't the known name. Nobody like I didn't. I'm not going to pretend like I knew anything about James Robinson. Like I, I knew nothing about James Robinson at all. Um, and right now he's looking like a pickup for anybody who had late rookie drafts. If you drafted him in the late third, fourth round, or it was your first week of fab pickups, like he looks like an app. He does look like a league winner currently. Um, whether it was redraft or uh, dynasty, we're going to talk a little bit. We're going to be basically dynasty because that's what we do. In redraft, I'm probably holding him and just seeing if I can win the damn league with him because currently he is the RB6. He's averaging 19 points a game. Um, and yards per route run, according to um, – what's his name? Which website? is probably the most important stat, right? Uh, no, I don't know. I don't, who, who knows? <laughs> Uh, it's the A dot. My bad. What's Matt Kelly's website's uh, player profiler? Player profiler. Um, according to player profiler, he is yards per route run number two uh, at 2.64. Um, and then the yards per reception number one at 11.5, which Alvin Kamara has uh, much more receiving yardage, but apparently his yards per route run are better. He's tied for he sucks. Tied for 12th in attempts. So there's a bunch of guys tied for 8th and then a bunch of guys tied for 12th in that area. Um, he's got 60 attempts. He's 8th in yard rushing yards, 285. Um, and then 4th in total yards, 446, 161 rushing yards or receiving yards. Sorry, 446 rushing yards with 161 receiving yards behind only Alvin Kamara, Aaron Jones, and Dalvin Cook. Um, so there's a lot of chit-chat about this guy out there and I think the general consensus is sell that's where we were uh when we came in here is like hey you get you get this guy for nothing who knows if he's really any good uh, I know Bitco's not here he sold him for a second and Noah Fant before the season started because he Love picked it. him up uh last pick settle. of the draft settle right. settle 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 <laughs> Uh, like I mentioned, there there was Armstead and Azigbo ahead of him who were getting all the first team stuff. But you know, I haven't really heard anything about these guys coming back. I can't find. I've sur I scoured the internet yesterday trying to figure out if there was at least any rumblings. Now maybe next week it's like, oh, these guys are coming back. I don't Is know. Is Ryquell still on the COVID list? Yeah, he needs what Trump has, man. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what's going on. It said, and then like when you, it's like cryptic messages from. Uh, Marone, when he's he's gonna be out a while, a while. <laughs> um, so I don't know exactly what's happening there, but for the most part, he has swatted away Chris Thompson, who was which was with Dre Gruden in Washington, which is huge because Chris Thompson and Jay Gruden have a love affair. They might swing with each other's wives. I'm not sure, <laughs> uh, but there was that love ran real deep. Um, 
Chris Thompson has not looked like the uh, the same guy. Obviously, he's 30 and had a bunch of injuries. That's the uh, classic Robinson, where uh, the player's caught sleeping with the coach's wife, but the coach likes it and wants to watch kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. no, Chris, proceed. Um, so, I'm really, you're looking – you're looking that if, if Zigbo and Armstead do come back, if he could do the same and kind of thwart away uh, those two guys from his workhorse role, because that's what he is. He is getting workhorse usage right now. I read all those numbers to you. Um, he is absolutely crushing it in, in all sort of – there's not – there isn't too many backs left in the NFL who are getting the treatment that he's getting, um, which, you know, Leonard Fournette got in the system last year. Now is a different head coach and a different offensive coordinator, obviously, or a different offensive coordinator, not a different head coach. Um, but this offensive line is playing pretty well. Like, I went back and watched all the tape. Uh, I watched a couple of all-22s, uh, not every game, but some of them. Uh, I thought the offensive line was playing uh, really well or at least pretty good. Um, but really is like the Jag, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago is the Jags offense. We were like, Oh, we're kind of interested, but was it kind of a little bit of a Fugazi? They've been on the schneid a little bit, a lot of talk about, well, it's negative game scripts and you know, this is what's going to be the Jags and you know, yada, yada, yada. I mean, you know, Minshew wants to keep winning, but these negative or keep going as hard as he can. These negative game scripts really hasn't stopped him in the last two matchups. He's been very good with negative game scripts in the last, they haven't gone away from him um, in any of those. And obviously um, he's doing well in the, in the receiving game. So that'll keep you in there. The red zone attempts are something that, you know, you might start to worry about. Can this Jags offense keep moving the ball? Um, he's, he doesn't rank very well in that area right now. He's only got five attempts inside the 20, two attempts inside the 10 and one attempt, one attempt inside the five. Um, so those aren't super great numbers. Uh, like some of the better guys are up in the 15s and 20s uh, from from the 20 and then the 10s in the 10. Uh, so those aren't the best numbers ever um, in in that range, especially for how well Robinson's doing. So that could be a little bit of cause co- for concern. You like to think Visca's LaVisca Chenault's going to, you know, continue to, to develop because he looks really good with the ball in his hands. And DJ Chark looks like the real deal. And when he's out there, he, he commands a decent amount of that offense. Um, right. So, uh, the film for me, the o, like I said, the O line looks really good. In general, James Robinson seems a little quicker than fast. The straight line speed doesn't seem to be crazy, uh, but he gets what's blocked for him, and he does have the ability to make somebody with a subtle move miss in the backfield. And he, he can also create a little bit out there in space. Um, from what I've seen, he has pretty good hands. He's made a couple of catches where he had to go down and get things, um, and he usually catches him and hits him in the hands. He runs pretty hard. His yards after contact. Um, necessarily don't say that, but that's not what I see when I watch him. It's much, he runs a lot more physical and, and breaks some tackles, uh, from what my eyeballs can see, which I know people don't like that. There's no way that the yards per yards after contact in my eyes, there's gotta be the yards after contact. Um, he certainly isn't special, um, but with this kind of usage, he's good and he's not, he's, he's slightly above average. I would say he, he does everything well. Uh, or everything good. He's not great at anything. Like we talked about this with, with Damian Harris, who was another guy who broke out a little bit this week in his first action. He was sure. always a guy who was who was always really good at a bunch of things at Bama, but definitely wasn't great at any one thing. And I think that's what you got from James Robinson here. Um, it's just a matter of moving forward. Do you think that they're going to, you know, have a committee of some sort? Like I mentioned, like there's not a whole lot of teams in the league that don't have a committee of some sort. And, uh, he was an undrafted free agent, so maybe they stick with him, but there'll probably be another guy or two in the mix who who eat in to what he's doing. And it's it's the Jags overall. So, like, what are your general sentiments on, you know, you keeping this guy? Are you selling him? What are you doing? Because, honestly, right now, I'm pretty undecided on what to do. Like, I, part of me kind of just says, fuck it, just keep the guy. You got him for nothing. He looks pretty good. I don't think in the in the next three or four weeks, if you decided, hey, my team's not going to make it, or hey, you know, I'm seeing a couple of things that I don't love, that you still won't be able to get similar value to where he is right now. I'm not saying going into next season he's going to be draft like there's no reason that he's going to be the RB six next year, or that nothing that leads me to believe that he'll be this good next year, and and nobody else to to take anything from him. Um, so in that regard, yes, you should probably get something. But if he can help you win this year in this crazy year that we're having. Uh, might be worth something. And then maybe maybe even if you keep him before you get too deep in the offseason and too many things develop, you could probably even still sell him if he was cheap and finish the season all right. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, I just took up a lot of time and space there. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot that you said that uh, that we that I want to touch on, and um, I agree with a lot of the things you said. Um, I think that you know, definitely is passing the eye test. He's he's above average player. He runs super deliberate. He gets downfield and he gets what's blocked and he does it quickly. You know, not not necessarily fast, but it's quick. Right. And yeah. there's no nonsense. There is a little wiggle. I think the hands are really soft. They're sticky. I mean, it, the ball just, you know, when you watch Rojo catch it, it's like, oh, just come on, get that ball. But when he catches it, it's just, it sticks in there. Um, and, I, you know, he he's looks soft hands, really, like you said. I like right. that. Right. Soft hands. He looks really dependable in pass protection. He's he's standing his dude up. Um, he's, he's also busting off from pass protecting when he's not have anybody to, and he becomes an outlet. He's running a fair amount of routes out of the backfield. He's catching everything that throws with him. He seems to actually be thriving with the negative game script because that's when he's piling up these PPR catches, you know, and then you're seeing the upside when he's busting off touchdown runs. And I, he talked about those balls inside of the five, you know, and I think he converted them, um, when he does get down there, um, he's, he scored a fair amount of touchdowns and he scored from further out. Um, you know, get Chris Thompson out of there. You know, he looks much better than Chris Thompson with the ball in his hands. You yeah, know, this he, was he, this was I, Robinson's biggest uh, percentage uh, used, I think, this this week at least snap share, and really has uh, see, like you said, swatted away some Chris Thompson. Yeah, like I don't want to tackle James Robinson. That man, like one of his best attributes is he finishes with power, huh? Yeah, and he's an undrafted free agent. That man's hungry, right? Right. And 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 to the Jags credit, they've played some really good teams. Um they were without Chark for one of those games, which te- definitely changes the, the 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 makeup of that offense because he's he is so fast and can stretch. Well, the they team. haven't they haven't played great teams. I mean, played the Bengals and the Dolphins. And but the other two that they played they, were decent. Indy the first game, they got crushed stat-wise, but uh which Indy might be the best defense, you know, conglomerate right now. Um, sorry, go ahead. And then I can't remember who who the other team was that they played, but that was another decent team. Um, so yeah, I'm drawing a blank right now too. There, you know, I, I'm not worried about the negative game script per se. I, I'm not worried about Divine Ozigbo or uh, Ryquel Armstead. I mean, he's running yeah, like, too well. He's playing really well. Why? Why? You know, I'd like to give the Jags some credit here and just say, just stick with Robinson, which we've at least seen them say, hey, we're basically sticking with Lenny last year. At least the head coach was. Right. Um, so, I mean, you've got this player that you didn't pay anything for. If If you're a contending team and you've got a good squad around you and you've had – you know, maybe you've had a few injuries at running back and maybe you're plugging him in as your second running back every week and you've gotten him surrounded by, you know, maybe a stud quarterback and some stud wide receivers and a good tight end and you're just – you're waiting for, you know, one of your running backs to come back or something like that and you're rolling with James Robinson. Like, I can't be mad at you for keeping him and just rolling with that, you know, because this is – these are – these are the players that help you win. When you pick up somebody like this in a later round of a rookie draft or in free agency or something like that, it just totally can change. It usually takes one of these kind of guys to win. Right. So I can't be mad at all if you want to hold and ride this this wave out because I do think it's going to be pretty decent for the rest of the year. Maybe he's not going to finish as the RB6. I don't think that keeps up. I don't know that he's going to no, score I think as I many saw somewhere that offensively they might have the fifth easiest – Schedule, but I'm not a high. I, I didn't write it down. That shit changes, man. He, yeah, he, he I, I agree. I don't going to happen. Right. And so, um, I don't. I don't see him going anywhere. And the fact that he's catching so many balls and looks so good, both in pass protection and catching the ball and running routes, you know, I don't see the floor going anywhere. So that's really, uh, that's really something to hang your hat on. And then he, it seems like there is a two touchdown ceiling in 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 the cards as well. So loving what I'm seeing from him. If you're not though, if you're if you're not a contender at all, sure, or, or uh, yeah, a good call. You know, yeah, I think I think the smart move because I don't see this. I don't see him being the long term. You know, I just he's not a special guy. He could be. He could be. He could be a, a good uh, a David Montgomery for your team, who you know you're getting ten points every week out of. But I'm not sure he's going to keep up this workhorse usage 
uh, kind of player. And I'm just as good at, at I'm running just, back as David Montgomery is. I'm just using a lot of people David are Montgomery hate that statement, but well, I'm just um, saying like the the uh, amount of you know somebody you can count on for an RB two production later, but you right now you could trade him for more uh, right. than that. Right. I think the smart long term dynasty move is to is to cash out on your James Robinson stock. Um, we're going to, we're going to bring up uh, in the next segment, some buys and we're going to talk about some guys whose stock is kind of down right now that we still like and would, would be down to invest in. And like, if I could, if I could package him up to get a couple, get one of those guys or, or, or get a decent player for him, or, I mean, I guess you, I mean, if we are talking about trying to get a first for Josh Kelly, then you're going to need to get more than that for James Robinson. Right. But I don't know that you're going to get more yeah, than I mean, a first for James Robinson. Yeah, so you if I'm a bad a, team, if I'm a bad a team, first. I'm definitely looking for a first. I'll take but are you a first. looking for more than that, or you would take a first? I would take a first. Yeah, I, I think I would take a first as well. But like I said, if, I, if I'm competing and, and playing well, like I, I'm probably just going to hang on and ride this out for a little while. And if he's, you, th- you see your season maybe going down the hill a little bit or – Maybe you finish a season, went to the playoffs, you lose. I think you'll still have some opportunity to sell James Robinson, or you got to, you know, you got to stay active and early and try to give get somebody James Robinson before too much happens. Because uh, you know, and uh, who the fuck knows? Maybe they just go on and say, "Hey, we got James Robinson. We got plenty of other issues. We're we're not even addressing the running back." And next year we could be saying, "Fucking James Robinson should have kept him." Right. I just think you've seen too many flashes in the pan at running back. Yeah. To not sure, for just sure. try I mean, cash out, you know? 100% uh, agree. Because he's not I like just, a special talent with a bunch of draft capital behind him who people love and are going to keep getting opportunities even if something were to happen, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, winning winning, I'd keep and, and ride it out, see how it goes. Losing 100% uh, sell. So, 